right, guys, we have a basically brand new Bosch duckless unit here. I believe it's a three in one. Yep, three in one. So the board is bad in it. And what they give you is basically the whole, the whole everything. <clears throat> when I got this board, I was like, oh my God, look at this box. That's what they give you. They give you basically the whole panel here. So we're going to replace this board today and see uh, if we can get this thing going. All right. Well, here it is. That's what they give us all this here. So that whole thing's going to come out and we're going to put the new one in. A lot of sensors, a lot of stuff here where it's a three in one. So make sure we don't get any of this mixed up. Looks like it's all pretty much labeled pretty good from A to E there, A to E here. So it should be pretty straightforward. Looks like refrigerant lines run through the board here to help cool it, it looks like. It's pretty neat. Yeah, see, this is where those refrigerant lines run through. It kind of sandwiches the refrigerant lines right in there. So we got to be really careful with this thing. Probably pop the top off, take all this out, and lift it up through the top. Probably be the best way to do this. Man, there is a whole lot going on in this thing. <laughs> That's pretty cool though. Pretty cool indeed. The bummer though is they do not send any directions whatsoever with this board. So I'm hoping it's just a plug and play type deal. Typically with the Bosch boards, they tell you at least how to remove it and you know the process and stuff like that. But I got no papers with this board whatsoever. So hopefully we do it right. Let's go. All right, the way this guy works is it's actually formed into this plate here. So I just pop that off and uh, look at that. She is fried. Let me get it out a little better. We'll take a look. That was our problem. Good God. All right, um, I think I have everything disconnected. Uh, maybe not, there's still some stuff under here. All right, let's see. All right, now I think I have at least all the wiring that needs to come off is off. You see these connect the plugs here. So now I'm gonna start taking the bottom screws out first. Get all that loose and then the top ones. Let's see if we can get this thing out of here. So you see it's connected to this metal bracket here. So that's what I got to take out of there. This whole metal bracket. So wherever the screws are in that is what needs to come off. All right, I went ahead and took the whole front off. Because I'm going to need it off to get to some of these screws, I think. Maybe. I don't know. Makes it easier to see everything. But all right, now I'm going to start taking screws out. All right, I think we're loose. So I should be able to grab this and pull it straight up. And there's our old board. Yeah, check this out. She's all charred in there. Big time. Hopefully this is the only thing that happened. All right, new board is set. Now it's just gonna be a matter of hooking everything back up, getting all the screws back in and everything. 
Well, they didn't send any new heat sinking paste, but I carry some right here. I can't pronounce that, but <laughs> it came with a Fujitsu board. So I'm gonna put some new paste on this bad boy before we lock her down. All right, I think I got everything landed back. I just gotta clean up some wires. I got our cooling heat sink back. All of our wires, I believe, are landed properly. I had to go back to the schematic for this. One was the chassis heater, one was the crankcase. I had to make sure I got those in the right spot. This one's the reversing valve. I think everything is landed. I just gotta zip tie some wires back, compressors back. This goes to the compressor. These two down here go to the fan, both fans, one, two. Um, yeah, just cleaning up some wires now. You guys, whenever you're doing a board, make sure you figure out where each one of those plugs go. Sometimes it says it right on the board, but sometimes you gotta trace it out or look at the schematic. That way you know better where to diagnose something or where to you know, test later on a, either a different unit of the same model or that same unit later. So you're not you know, scratching your head wondering what wire goes to where, on which component, which part of the board. Changing a board out is very, very good for learning the layout of a unit because you can figure out where everything goes and because you're already right there working on it anyway. So just take those couple extra minutes to figure out where everything goes. All right, here is all the wiring put back just about as neat as I could get it. Maybe I can get this cleaned up a little bit so it's not laying on that heat sink, but that's kind of the way it was when I got here. Just making sure everything's good and landed before we turn this thing back on. All right, we're gonna try to turn this thing on. Things are clicking, things are happening. We got two zeros on the display. I think the best thing we're gonna do here is just turn it on and see what the hell happens. Okay, here is two of our wall cassettes, and we have another one in here. Right here. So apparently what happened was they could not, after installing when they went to start this thing up, they were able to start up the out, those two, but this door was locked, they couldn't get in here. So, Everything ran fine, but then once they went to use this one is when it broke. So we're gonna bury this. We're gonna run this one and just this one by itself. We're gonna bury it down to 60. See what happens. These two are off. Okay. We got something going. We got something cooking. All right, this guy's off to the races. She is making some cold air. That is nice. All right, I'm going to turn them on one at a time. I'm about to turn one of these on slowly until we got all of them on. Put her at 60. And when we come back in, we'll turn the other one on. Give this one about five or 10 minutes to catch up. 
this is a four ton unit and it'll do up to five heads I wonder if they have this for later expansion maybe if they want to add a couple more heads later because I think those two that are side by side are 18 so that would be three times that maybe not they might be maxed out and then a ton in that little office right, we're going to turn the last one on now They're all three running. All right, fellas, I think we're good. She's running wide open. All right, guys, so um, that was the first Bosch Duckless I had ever worked on. So uh, it wasn't that bad. Everything was pretty easy to get to on that board, but um, it was a little confusing the way I was explaining it, why it broke. So they installed all the units at the same time, but apparently when they, they did a startup on a different day, so when they did the startup they were able to start the two units in the conference room there in the that that larger room but they couldn't get in the other room because it was locked and i don't know if this was a coincidence or what happened but when in that little office when they went to start that one is when everything seemed to go down now i off camera i checked all the wiring everything was fine and when i started it back up everything took off and ran and right behind that heat sink is where it burnt up at. I really didn't get it good on camera because it was behind that heat sink, but it was good and charred all through there. So that was what our problem was, but uh, we got it back up and running and they're good to go now. So first Bosch Douglas I've worked on, not a bad piece of equipment as long as the board stays good. <laughs> but all right, guys, that's it for this one. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll catch you on the next one.